Hey guys, with the latest generation CPUs, graphics cards, and mobile boards releases now over, we're still missing the lower end stuff. But we thought we've got some older generation stuff, and the old equipment is way cheaper than Intel 13th gen or Ryzen 7000 series. So, what we're gonna do is make this build in a somewhat recent Silverstone Milo 12 case. This case is suitable for a small form factor build on your desk or under your desk, as well as you could actually feasibly put it inside your TV console. So let's get into it and start building it out. As far as products are concerned, we're gonna go with a B650 motherboard. Uh, it's a mid-range, but it has all the features you really need. Uh, we're gonna go with a Radeon RX 16900 XT. So that's the highest end last gen card, but it is an absolute beast when it comes down to performance on a 1080p and 1440p. And in most cases, 4K is just good enough. For the CPU, we've actually gone with the Ryzen 5 5600G. And the reason I'm going with the G version is because if it's a media PC, you may not always want to encode or decode your footage from, for example, your NAS. Uh, you can actually use your CPU to do a lot of the hardware decoding. Um, so we'll test it out and see how that delivers. Uh, for memory, we've gone with 16 gigabytes of uh, Corsair Vengeance DDR4. Uh, this is a 3600 mega transfer speed. And since it's a small form factor build, we've gone with a Silverstone small form factor cooler. Hydrogon H90 ARGB. Um, the HB is going to be hidden in this case, but it's in there if you want it. And for the case, as I mentioned, it, we're going to be using a Silverstone Milo 12. Let me just open it up and uh, let's quickly have a look around. Meet Milo, a small full factor PC, which is reminiscent of um, actually probably my first PC that I had back in 1996, 7. Um, even has a CD-ROM cutout if you were to install it. Uh, so, but pretty good for a media console PC. It comes with two USB 3 A port, as well as USB type C on the front, as well as a microphone and headphone combo jack. And the aforementioned cutout for the CD player. Uh, I'm not gonna be using it for CD player, but well, it's there if you want it. On top, we have two buttons and a little LED light. And that's it, it's very minimalistic. Um, it is reminiscent of the Fractal Ridge that came out quite recently, and it's that similar form factor, so you can kind of place it um, vertically or horizontally, it's whichever you prefer. You're actually able to take apart all four panels to get you better reach inside, so let's start with that and kind of work our way through. With the panels off, we can see that, well, we have the skeleton of the case and it weighs next to nothing. You immediately see a whole stack of positions where you can install SSDs. So we have two slots over here for two and a half inch SSDs. One more location over here. There's one more here. These are kind of, these two are kind of hidden behind the panels, which is kind of cool. So you have a bit of flexibility there. And obviously these ones are just inside. It is one of those cases where you install things from both sides. So you place motherboard in here and you flip it over and you install the graphics card over here. And it supports a three slot graphics card. So we'll get into that in a bit. Let's get these cables out and start with the power supply. And this is where we have a first, actually very, very cool thing. Uh, this case supports a full size ATX power supply, providing you don't use the front CD player. If you have that, you can go up to SFXL max. So just be aware of that. Uh, we'll go with a full size power supply and um, we're gonna challenge ourselves a bit. The power supply that I have actually has built-in cables. So they're quite, quite long. So we'll see if we can actually cable manage all of this once we've built it. I wanna give kudos to Silverstone. Um, for all the accessories, you get one bag, one reusable plastic bag, and you have all, all the screws and all the bits inside. So you don't have like 20 non-reusable bags that are, you know, killing turtles. So, good job. On the Philips side, we have a healthy screw, and uh, a slightly unhealthy screw. This is a bit useless. These things happen, but can't use it. With the power supply in, as you can see here, there's not that much space for cable management. So just be careful and just kind of start planning ahead of time. Uh, I do like that there is a hole for the back of the motherboard. So if you need to change anything like the cooler, you actually have access from both sides. So that's a nice little touch. Uh, next is let's get the motherboard in. Before we get the motherboard into the case, let's do the prep work and start with installing the M.2 drive. And we're just using a Sabrent one terabyte drive over here. It's a PCI Gen 4 drive. 
this is a slightly older motherboard, therefore you don't have the nice comfortable features such as Q latch that you have to deal with the screws and this happens. But hey, get in there at some point. In the end, I do like progress and how the new motherboards are just easier to build them, especially when you have to take them apart after the build anyway. It's funny, the limitations of just having one SSD on a platform like this, uh, not actually that big of a deal. You can store one on, the, on your back in the future. It's a nice little touch. Next is the CPU. So, one thing to note, these CPUs actually come, come with a cooler, but we're not gonna use stock cooler. We're gonna use a one form Silverstone. Large gen AMD CPUs still use pins. So be careful, don't want to bend those. And we can finish off with installing our RAM as well. Line it up. And the second one. And now we can work on getting this cooler in. We have the components installed and the brackets in place. Let's just install this little tiny little cooler. Cooler is clearly made for small form factor builds because if you look at it, it basically aligns with the RAM, top of the RAM. It's not the biggest RAM, but still. There we go. And it's in. Now I just need to route the cables around for the fan and for the ARGB. And this ARGB actually is split into two. So you have the connector to the motherboard, but you can also extend it by having another connector go into it. And it's super long, so you can put it anywhere on this motherboard, or you could even push this into a case if it supports a separate controller, which is a nice little touch. And we're gonna go into the ARGB header, drop the cables inside, and it's actually kind of neat. Looks like a little baby PC. Since we already have onboard graphics from this uh, Ryzen 5 5600G, um, technically speaking, this is a perfectly capable PC to be your workstation or anything else. And it's nice, cute, tiny, and actually quite powerful. Since the motherboard is ready, we can install that inside the case. So what you need to do is actually push against the back cover to ensure it fits in and you can kind of squeeze past the big power supply. What I've done is after installing the motherboard, I kind of did a draft cable routing. So for the ATX power on this particular motherboard, you kind of have to run the cable across and just kind of zigzag it back. Uh, considering this is an ATX power supply with a long cable. Um, if you had a custom sleeve cable, then you could obviously tailor it better. But in this case, I just hide all the cable over there. Um, then you've got obviously the USB type C and USB 3 cables. You can just tuck them all in there. Uh, I haven't finished it fully because I still got the graphics card to install and these cables to hide, but we can do that a bit later on. One thing I do want to say is I do very much like the Asus little extension cable for the front header cables. Uh, that means I don't actually need to deal with them right now. I can deal with everything else and then later on just take them and just go whoop, 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 and we're done. So I'm going to leave this for, for last, uh, which is not something I would recommend normally because these are very finicky and kind of stuff them in there. I'll probably start with these in the future. And now we can get on to the, the graphics card itself. So for the graphics card, it actually comes with a little... Um, adapter. This is a PCIe Gen 4 riser, so you kind of have to install it to install a new graphics card. Uh, if you did have a PCIe Gen 5 graphics card or motherboard and things are not working, what you need to do is go to the BIOS and set it to PCIe Gen 4 speeds, and that'll resolve any issues. What you need to do is first install it into the motherboard, and then you kind of bend it across and install it to the case over here. Be careful, it is very fragile. You kind of bend it in, go across, and you'll see screw holes just here. So it does come with the included screws. You line up the screws and you install it. I would do I'd half tighten them both and then fully tighten them towards the end. Now the risers in place, the motherboard, nice and solid. By the way, if you're using any of the SSDs, this is the time to do it. You can do it later, but I think this is a better time before you've got the graphics card, you can still route the cables around. It's kind of a shame. A lot of motherboards nowadays actually have a limited amount of SATA ports. This one actually comes with four. So it's just, just right. So you can actually install all four drives. So you can have plenty of storage. And SSDs nowadays are no longer as expensive as they used to be. So this is a two and a half slot card. So what I need to do is just take off the back covers and I'll take off all three of them to set it up. 
This is obviously a very small graphics card in comparison to what you get nowadays. Before we get the graphics card inside, what you'll find is this, this little plastic cover, and it's actually just a holder for the graphics card. So you can open it up and take the graphics card and put that inside. That's in. And then the, you can use the holder to squeeze onto it so it kind of holds it in place. So if you have it in a vertical orientation, the graphics card just lays on it. So let's just do that for a second and screw the graphics card in properly. And that's the card inside. And uh, we've plenty of space to go. It's kind of impressive. Since the card is now inside, we can route all the cables. Or well, in this case, we're just going to use two cables to power it. Again, large generation cars did not need anywhere near as much power as uh, current generation, which is, um, again, another nice thing about last gen. And it's another nice thing because less power means less heat. So hopefully this will work really, really well. But we'll come to that a bit later on when we start testing. Right, the cables are in, and as we have these uh, dual power supply cables, the stock cables, uh, it's kind of a mess, but uh, just cable tie all together. And as this is a closed case, does mess really matter? Uh, besides, you know, plugging your cables right next to the power supply fan or the main cooling fans, um, doesn't really matter. Hide them in, stuff them in the corner somewhere, and you're good to go. So in this particular case, we have some leftover PCIe cables. I can just put them in here, and it'll just be nicely covered later on. I'm not too worried about making it too neat. Um, same goes for the back. So here, what we can do now is take that front header connector, and as everything is nicely labeled, we can just plug it all in. And voila, take this now, just hide it all inside. Doesn't really matter. The airflow is going to be going around it anyway. Same goes for this main cable. So kind of just stuff it all in there. You could cable tie it. I think the most important thing to consider is you would need clear path of air here, here, and obviously on the graphics card. If you really struggle with your cooling for your graphics card, what you can do is actually install an 80 mil fan down below here uh, and set it up as an intake fan. So it just provides a bit more fresh air for the graphics card. Uh, that's really it. Let me just close it all up and let's boot it and see how it performs. By the way, don't forget to turn on your power supply switch as you're using the extension cable uh, before you close it up because otherwise you're going to be struggling and finding out why things are not working. Lastly, we can put on the front cover. And the build is complete. Mostly. It does come with some feet. They come in two different modes. X mode. Be very careful. There you go. So now the PC is a bit raised. You have a bit of stability as well. So it's nice and stable. And then if you wanted to place it on its side, unfortunately here, these feet don't do anything. You can't use them for the side. It'd be nice if you could like convert it to some other mode from this, but no, that's, that's not the case. For the side mounting, you have these little feet. Um, I'll do some tests later on to see if uh, there's a performance difference between using these on its side or having it upwards. I have a feeling, just like we had on Fractal Ridge, having it on its side will probably be a little bit louder uh, because there's not that much space underneath because of these feet to get fresh air in on either CPU or the GPU. But then it depends uh, if you have GPU above or below. So what I'll do, I'll test it out and tell you how it performs. We'll do some tests here in the studio where it just open, and then we'll also try to give you an example of what it would be like inside a TV console. With the testing complete, I have a few observations to share with you. The first and probably the most important one is case orientation. As anticipated, when subjected to stress test using both Fermark and Prime95, the horizontal orientation resulted in the higher temperatures compared to the vertical orientation. However, the noise levels remained consistent at around 45 dBA in both positions. The CPU in the horizontal orientation was slightly hotter and slowed down by 60 to 80 megahertz, while the GPU experienced a temperature increase of 5 to 6 degrees, with the hotspot temperature rise of up to 10 degrees Celsius. It's not a huge deal, but with the limited airflow, you're essentially leaving performance on the table. 
it is important to note that our tests were conducting on a desk. If placed inside TV console, airflow would be further restricted, potentially leading to even higher temperatures, depending on your setup, of course. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to more videos like this. When we placed this PC in our TV console, I must say it fits just right, and it looks pretty good too. When it comes to performance, there is a catch, or in our example, it may catch fire. With AMD Ryzen 5600G and Radeon 6900XT, the system hit its peak temperature very quickly and stayed there. During the same test where we use Fermark and Prime95, the system started thermal throttling within the minute and actually lost almost half its performance towards the end of the test. While these tests pushed the CPU and GPU to their limits, they provide valuable insights to what this setup can actually handle. Ultimately, we decided against keeping the PC inside the console and recommend placing it vertically beside the console instead. One thing to note, our test setup included a powerful GPU, which is an overkill for a home theater PC. This setup is more suitable for gaming rather than just watching movies. For a more movie watching experience, the AP alone would likely suffice, or you could opt for a low power graphics card that generates less heat and maintains quiet operation. Additionally, we would definitely recommend installing an 80mm fan to improve airflow within the case. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the Silverstone Milo 12 case and our setup. Let us know in the comments below how you think you could enhance this configuration and your overall impression of the case. If you want to check out any of the items covered in the video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.